Hi, this is Stephen Pope and I'm my Amazon guy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a shipment. So at this stage, we've loaded product data and we've got three new products all connected to a parent. And the first thing we need to do is convert them to FBA. So right now they're merchant fulfilled with zero quantity. So we're going to convert them to FBA. And Amazon recently uh, changed a couple things in the last year. So the first thing is the barcode. So if, if there's not a UPC printed on it and we're in the home and goods category, then typically speaking, um, you're going to want to use an Amazon barcode, which is an FN SKU and you'll print that out or you can pay Amazon um, 20 cents a label and they'll put it on for you. So in this instance, there's not UPC codes um, with barcodes on the retail packaging. So we'll keep these as an Amazon barcode convert and send to inventory. Um, this next step is also relatively new. Um, hazmats become a really big deal in Amazon, so you actually have to go through and click no, no, no battery, no dangerous um, goods or waste, and do that for each individual product. Super, uh, super annoying roadblock that Amazon is throwing in your way. The good news is, is while it's uh, converted to FBA, you don't have to do this again. But if you ever flip your SKU back and forth between Merchant Fulfilled and FBA, you will have to do that every time. Um, so sometimes it makes sense to have a Merchant Fulfilled listing and an FBA listing um, if you're going to be selling in multiple fulfillment methods. So next we got a choice between individual products and case product. I, I pretty much can't think of a scenario where I, I use individual product shipping anymore. Um, I prefer case because uh, when it's case, you can lock in the specific uh, number of units and often send them to less locations. Um, so if you're sending in a specific number of units in a case um, and you always know it's going to be the same number, selecting case makes a lot of sense. So highly recommend uh, you do that. So when you ship an item in for the first time, you do have to put in product dimensions. Um, and then every time you ship something in, you have to put in uh, case dimensions. So I'm going to look those up. The product dimensions of this product is going to be 4, 1, and 0.5. And then I'm just putting in 0.1 on pounds, hitting save. Now this is done one time per product. And then you will not have to put this in again in the future. But anytime you launch a new item, you will have to put that information in. So we've got the product dimensions in. Um, next, we're going to do units per case and number of cases. So we're going to send in one case of each, uh, 27 units in each case. So at a later step, we'll put in uh, some case dimensions. So in terms of prep, there's really no prep for this particular product. So we'll continue to the next step. Now, who labels? So um, <clears throat> Depending on whether you want to have the merchant label them, that, that would be you doing it yourself, or if you're going to do Amazon labels them. And they do charge uh, a 20 cents fee per label. You can see here, are you sure you want to save your fulfillment settings? Um, and that, that allows them to uh, charge for that. So 20 cents a unit. We'll have Amazon do the labeling on that. And if you ever want to change who does the labeling on it, you'll have to recreate the SKU uh, because they do lock that in. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so now we've got our shipment. Um, all three things are going to the same location and they're all in one box each, so it makes it very nice. So we hit approve shipment here. We've got our label fee of $16. We work on the shipment next. You can select your carrier, UPS or FedEx or the most common. We're going to do one SKU per box. And that's usually typically what I recommend on almost every shipment, especially case shipments. Very important. And then to avoid a, a processing fee, we're going to use a web form. 
and this is where you put in the case dimensions. So we know that a case weighs five pounds, so we'll put in uh, the five pounds in the correct column there. We know we're going to have 27 units per configuration. And then the box dimensions, so I've got 5.5 uh, times 7.5 times 4. And go ahead and fill that in on all three of those at the same time using the top column. And we'll hit confirm. We then calculate the shipping. So 1260 to send in all three of these boxes, very affordable. We'll hit accept charges. Print the box labels is our last step. And then these labels um, are, you're putting both these labels on the box. So this is the uh, Amazon label. So this is what Amazon will scan in for the barcode. And then you've got the uh, UPS label right here. One thing I like to note, um, if you're printing out multiple labels at a time, you can see which SKU you're working with. And that SKU information is right here. So. Um, often I like to use um, SKU naming conventions that relate to the UPC. So I'll do, you know, two letters that stand for the brand and then the last four digits of the UPC code. And it makes it really easy to have a standardized data set. Um, so we've done that here. So this is the last step. Next step is just to throw these labels on the box, send it out the door, and you're good to go. Uh, thanks for watching. This is My Amazon Guy. If you need any help uh, creating shipments, send me an email, Stephen at myamazonguy.com.